Welcome back, everyone. I hope the coffee was good during the break. Was it? Yeah? Okay, I see a lot of people nodding, so that's a good point for the... So, we start again, uh, second session, and uh, first we have Urs Baumann talking about the Dev GitOps, Open GitOps principles and uh, in networking. So, go ahead, this is the pointer. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. So, um, to digest the coffee, some activations. Who would call himself a DevOps engineer? Okay, maybe 10. <laughs> Who would call himself a software engineer? Well, okay, quite surprised. And who would call himself a classical network engineer? Okay, that's the moment. And just to be inclusive, who would who would be a sales guy? <laughs> okay, well, um, yeah, my name is Will Spaumann. I'm an open source freak, and I'm here to talk about open GitOps. Um, our industry is really well in misusing terms or using it multiple times. So my main goal here is just to um, show my interpretation of GitOps. So what is GitOps? When should we call something GitOps? And when is something not GitOps? And hopefully I can bring this message in the next 26 slides. So. For the ones who in identify as a software engineer, um, they probably know this guy, uh, Martin Fowler. He is, um, I think, yeah, well known in this industry. And in the talking about software engineering, continuous integration is one of the big topics, right? So the idea is to continuously build and test our software and to automate the deployment so that we can be fast. And normally in our industry, the software engineers, they do something and if they do it well, why not also try to apply it for our industry? Um, yeah, so I will go fast here. Um, not so interesting in the end, but keep the build fast. So what we want is to have a fast feedback. If we would develop something, we want to have the feedback from the customer as soon as possible. If something in this change break, as smaller as we can make this change windows, the better we can then troubleshoot if something goes wrong. We could also, of course, then in software engineering have all this funny stuff like A-B testing, canary deployment, all the nice stuff. And then we can minimize the impact if something goes wrong. Because everywhere that uh, someone is involved, there is possibility that it can go wrong. Sometimes it can go wrong even if we are not involved. That's the life. Uh, that's why we uh, test. That's why we have to uh, have certain quality assurance steps, right? So who is doing CICD? Continuous integration, continuous deployment. Okay, that's good. So GitOps is not CI/CD. So if you have something in Git, like your configurations, if you use CI/CD, that does not mean that you're doing GitOps. GitOps itself has four simple principles. And as long as you don't align to all of these four principles, it is not GitOps. It is using Git totally makes sense. I'm a huge Git fan, as you probably can see. Um, but just using Git does not mean that we should call it GitOps. Even if we have CICD pipeline and everything together. Um, yeah. So what is GitOps? GitOps itself is more or less just a collection of best practices. So how we should uh, do something uh, what has worked well in the past. It comes from the software engineering uh, area, but definitely also can be applied in network. I will go to some details later. 
Um, another term we we uh, were successfully destroying is single source of truth. I'm almost not allowed to say it loud because everyone nowadays understands something else. Single source of truth, right? And some people, they believe the single source of truth is on the network, on the box. Some believe it is Netbox, InfraHub. Um, some believe it is everything and nothing. So, yeah. My goal is that we can prevent the term GitOps to be the same fate than single source of truth. Yeah. So what we want to have here is we want to have it in a Git. It does not really need to be Git. It just has to be versioned and immutable. And we want to have a declare, uh, declare desired state. Um, who has the network completely uh, automated that they use a desired state. Who has around 50% or more automated? Okay, I'm quite surprised. Okay, I was hoping it would be more, um, but that's good because then you have a lot to improve, right? Or you like the way it is, that you have to do everything by hand. That's also fine if that's how your business run. Um, yeah. So we would have a history. We see exactly how did the infrastructure look or our application, depending what we are automating with this GitOps principles. And we would have a possibility to roll back. Because every time something can go wrong, if, especially when talking about software, I think for each 10 lines of code we write, there is approximately one bug. Depending who writes the code, can be even more. So there are bugs we need to test, but we also need the possibility to roll back. If we use software or infrastructure as code, we definitely also need these features. It does not mean that GitOps is the only way. We can definitely use traditional CICD, we can build our own stack. This is just one of the possible solutions we can use. So um, there was, I believe, around 2020, um, this uh, initiative to build open GitOps. It's an open source community in the Linux Foundation, um, or in the Cloud Native Foundation, who has the goal to really standardize the, the term GitOps and to define these four principles. There are some big companies there as well. And the idea is to define the principles that it makes it easier to talk about it, to educate, and also to compare tools. Because nowadays we have so many tools, it's hard to know which tool does which approach what is the idea behind and if we have this well-defined term GitOps and we know all these four principles, they are fulfilled, we have already a good idea what we can expect from this software. So the four principles are really simple. It has to be declarative. So the idea is to decouple the implementation and just to have the declarative abstract um, definition of our infrastructure or of the part of the infrastructure. It does not mean that we have to automate everything or nothing. We can also with, uh, use this approach, starting small. Let's say we only configure interfaces to facing access. Um, that's totally fine, but this needs to be in a declarative way. And it needs to be versioned and immutable. So most of the time we are talking about Git. So we can have it in Git or any um, hosting platform. And, but hmm, when it started, if I remember, I'm really bad with history. I think around 2017, the term GitOps got popular. Um, Git was the way to go, right? Well, still, if I have to use versioning and source code, I use Git. Who uses 
it's fine. <laughs> no one anymore. Um, so, who uses Git? Okay, nice. So, that's the way to go. But, of course, to fulfill the principle, it can also be something else. It just needs to have this versioning and immutable. Why I'm picky on this term? That's because some of the tools I'm talking later, they are not Git directly, but they have the same features. One part then is pulled automatically. That's a fine detail. Um, we need an agent for GitOps who pulls automatically changes in our Git or other tool and then applies these changes. So if we would talk about CICD, it would be not pull because the CICD is triggered by an action we do in Git. Right? If we push something or if we create a merge request, if we merge, there is a trigger from Git. GitOps does not use this trigger. It has automatically, so maybe every five minutes, maybe every year, depending on the thing, but it has to be regularly. Um, it's pulled automatically and it looks at this declarative definition and, of course, we then want to have this even idempotent action to the infrastructure. So that is this pulled automatically. And then combined with the four continuously reconciled, that means that all the time there is a process who checks if the desired state is still there. So if the typical example is Kubernetes, there it is really common because Kubernetes allows us to do this really easy. If we have a deployment and someone kills a pot, it just gets started automatically, right? That's the idea of Kubernetes and uh, container platform that all the containers can die at any time and we just reconcile and create it again. So now with GitOps, we really want to have this feature. It does not have to be Kubernetes. Uh, we can also implement it by ourselves, but the most famous GitOps tools, they definitely are in the Kubernetes uh, area. So how would this look? Um, we would make a change, we push it in the git, and now, not sure if I should try it. Oh yeah, works. We have this GitOps tool agent, probably in a Kubernetes cluster, who pulls these changes. And now it sees if it needs adjustments and would then reconcile um, the definition we have in the ACD and then Kubernetes would make the job that is doing best and check that everything is deployed how we have defined. So in the Kubernetes terms, if we would go and use kubectl and for example, change the replicas by hand, this GitOps tool would immediately change this back. So as soon as we're using GitOps, we cannot really change something on the box. Well, that's something we have to keep in mind. With GitOps, it is not the idea to do stuff manually. Otherwise, you really have to separate. You can say, I don't trust anyone to configure my BGP and DNS because I would never do a mistake with BGP and DNS by myself. So I want to do it by hand. But maybe some access interface configuration we can do with this approach. And the whole idea behind this, a faster time to the market, right? We want to have a, a short feedback loop and we have, want to have changes immediately in the system. That would be the idea. Use cases normally would be, of course, the classical application deployment, static websites, that's pretty easy. But of course, what I'm talking now is infrastructure as code. So we can um, automate our infrastructure um, there is a talk, there's a talk about CERN who uses GitOps to 
um, bootstrap new Kubernetes clusters, for example. So it can be really big scale as well. And the big benefit is standardized deployment and we at any time know exactly how the infrastructure looks or should look. Everything works well. So this is an example of a simple application deployed with August CD. That is, I think August CD and Flux C, uh, CD are the two big companies building um, GitOps tools for Kubernetes. Um, we see here we have the deployment, we see the health check if it's synced. So this works perfectly fine for cloud native applications. But now, could we also have this for network? Would it be nice? Who would like to have GitOps in the network? Okay. At least some. That's good to know. Um, GitOps can have some challenges as well, right? For example, secrets. We normally don't want to have them in Git. If we follow the, the declarative uh, principle exactly, we would need to store them. Of course, we can encrypt and store them. But here, normally, we make some exceptions that we have to handle secrets differently. Also, rollback. In theory, it should work perfectly fine, right? Like Jenkins say, my infrastructure was working fine yesterday at 4. I want to have exactly the same situation again. So I make a rollback at this time. Especially if we have third-party systems like a IPAM, this will be challenging. Because if I roll back, but the other third-party system does not really support the rollback, I'm in big trouble. Because then I have a drift between the systems. That's definitely one of the issues we have to look at. Um, and then if we have multi-stage environments, that's especially for application issue, if we have the same on multiple locations, we can have a lot of Git repositories, or we can have one Git repository with a lot of branches, so we have to think about what is the best strategy. Do I prefer many uh, repositories, or do I have a mono repository? Do I have many branches for each environment? That's something we need to consider if we uh, want to seriously use GitOps in production. So, GitOps in network automation. Anyone here using GitOps already in the network automation? Two. Okay, not so bad. Um, so, one way, definitely, you can build everything by yourself, right? You can build, of course, you will not implement Git by yourself, but you will take the tools and you build your solution. Then there are two projects, they sh work with Kubernetes. I'm not the biggest fan of them. Maybe I did not use them enough. Maybe they are a little complicated for me, but Nephew or Crossplane, they work with Kubernetes and therefore they are kind of easy to use GitOps with Argo CD or Flux CD. So that's something nice. And now the next two, they are kind of the new, the new, hmm. I cannot say this word, the new stuff. So um, KubeNet released or announced at the uh, Autocon 1 and InfraHub, who is open beta since six months, I guess. Um, surprisingly, InfraHub, the CEO is one of you, so one of the, oh, from Ops Mill, so in the break, the challenge to find him. Um, no, just kidding. So I'm lazy, so I did not draw, draw new graphs, so I just uh, went to steal some. Um, this is from the video Wim did about the KubeNet architecture. Um, so normally if we would talk about Kubernetes, we would have this replica set where we find we have two or three pods. 
we can scale up, we can scale down. And with KubeNet, the idea is to have something similar using the same tool, also Kubernetes, to actually talk to the network device and manage the configuration. Um, so there is the abstraction layer, and then we generate config for each box, and we can deploy. Because everything, all the definitions are declarative and need to be provisioned to Kubernetes with uh, customer resource definitions or, um, yeah, all the files there, we would have an easy way to use GitOps. Um, yeah, if you want to check it out, if you are bored of your old infrastructure, that's definitely some videos, uh, nice to watch, and there is a Discord channel who is active. Um, one of the projects there combined is this schema-driven configuration. I'm not sure if I'm, the whole thing is developing fast at the moment, so maybe this is already update, uh, outdated, but the idea is to have a way to load Yang schemas automatically in this uh, schema server, and then we use the data server to have the config snippets and then use GNMI or Netcom for anything else to talk to the boxes directly. Um, pretty new. Does anyone use this? Actually, yes. Um, I don't know the guys yet, but uh, Swisscom has moved from the traditional CICD approach to GitOps using um, parts of this KubeNet. There is a video from the last KubeCon Europe in Paris, was in the spring. Um, yeah, so they actually moving for, uh, to GitOps. So this is uh, something that people are doing. Does not mean that everyone has to do it, of course, um, but it's something we can consider. And here we would see, not so clearly, that they use Flux and not Argus CD, but in the end, they are really um, comparable, these two tools. Also really new is the Netbox operator, this team, uh, showed before from Swisscom 5G, they released a couple days, weeks ago, the netbox operator they wrote because, as I said, managing third-party applications and, for example, IP addresses can be challenging. So, operators is another term we kind of misuse a lot. So, in this case, what they actually are doing, we can create a prefix and then in Kubernetes with uh, custom resource definitions, and we can claim a prefix similar to a volume, and then we can use this in configurations. So, yeah, that's just a way to uh, claim IP addresses automatically in the whole ecosystem of uh, GitOps. Really new, I have not tested it yet. I like that it's open source. Um, yeah, if you want, check it out. So, I have to go seven minutes. Um, so, InfraHub, we have seen already um, in the task before, or talk before, this tool, the architecture is completely new approach with uh, a graph database on the basic. Um, I was really excited when I heard about this because I was dreaming for a long time to have a uh, single source of truth system that is truly GitOps uh, capable. Capable. So that would mean that I need to have these Git features, right? And what InfraHub brings to the table is the merge with Git itself. So I can have in InfraHub a branch and combine it with a branch in uh, Git. I can make changes, I can merge, so I can have the nice thing on both sides. Um, it has a lot of other features, but I'm not here to selling you Intro Hub. but if you have not yet checked it out, um, 
I highly recommend. So last night I was thinking I will make a demo. And then I was thinking, yeah, but another live demo. So I made a couple of screenshots last night. Um, this here is just Infrahub, more or less empty, and I defined by hand in some minutes my own schema. You can see this automatically rendered here um, with the menu, and now I can uh, define devices, interfaces, layer 2, layer 3 domains, really simple stuff. And then I went and made some interfaces for two switches, just as an example, and everything was done in the main branch. We see at the moment we only have a main branch, but then I went here to create a new branch, so that uh, you believe that I did this exactly for this talk. I put Swinog there, um, create a new branch. I went, I created some updates on the interfaces, and I now create um, a proposed change. So in Git, that would be um, pull request, merge request, depending on the tool. And this is how it looks. And here I have some nice features. I can see then the diffs, all the stuff. For example, if I would have artifacts and I would uh, create configuration or uh, data structure, I would see what is changing. So I can really review my changes and then I can use the merge button over here to, to merge it. Oh. Someone else would probably check if I did not fat thing or something and change it and merge it after review. So, whoops, was one too fast. And this is now the diff. So what I did, I created a layer two domain and I updated the two interfaces to this. And as soon as I merge, this will be in the main, right? For me, that is amazing to have in a single source of truth system. Because here I can manage my IPs, I can manage my infrastructure, I can really define everything in the schema I want. And yeah, I can now use it for GitOps. The only thing is for me at the moment missing, but I'm pretty sure if we ask for it, it will come soon is the possibility to roll back to a point. What it already has is the timeline. I can open uh, a window and say, how did my network definition look on Friday the 13th? I can check it, but um, this feature is not in the UI. Of course, with the GraphQL, you could do it by yourself, but I have a feeling this feature will come soon because this will be on demand from people. But yeah, I'm just here to talk about GitOps. I hope everyone now got the message that GitOps is not CICD, and I'm happy to answer all your questions. Thank you very much. <laughs> so, any questions? Oh. <laughs> I'm coming. Just say your name and us. Hello, uh, Pim van Stam, uh, S3 Group in the Netherlands. Uh, I have a question. Uh, how do you see the correlation between um, this Git DevOps and uh, Ansible playbooks for network management? Um, hmm. In the end, how you then configure the devices, if it's Ansible or something, it does not really matter for me. But what you would need is to have this GitOps agent who would pull from the Git or from your source and then play the, the playbooks, for example. So this can work together nicely. I'm more the non fan, but whatever tool stack works for you, that should be no problem. But you have seen uh, implementations with the, with the Git DevOps and uh, Ansible using using Ansible, or um, or not yet. Not hundred percent GitOps. I have seen tries, but um, yeah, many people using in the end CI/CD 
for deploying. Mm -hmm. So it's close, but it's not. So there's one piece missing. Um, but yeah, it's definitely possible. Okay, thank you. Questions? Thank you, for, thank you for your talk. Marek from Thalix here. Um, my question is, if you have, for example, two engineers building solutions for customers, and they each make a fork, and both of them pick the same subnet, let's say, for a link net to different customers, where in the merge process um, does this uh, get flagged up? Is that meant to be done at review? Is that in the CICD, or do the tools like InfraHub do this? That's an excellent question. I had the same question when I was closed uh, closed beta tester. And now, I'm not sure if I have it somewhere. There is one feature, for example, in InfraHub, resource pools who are um, general. So you can just say, I need the next prefix. I need the next VLAN ID. Otherwise, you have to implement this. Because if you have everything in Git and you hard code, the prefixes, the VLAN ID, the ASN numbers, you will end up to have issues, definitely. So, excellent question. Thank you. And last question. That was quick. Dan May from Swisscom. <laughs> um, so it seems to me that the only difference between what you present as GitOps and traditional CICD is the pool model. Um, why? <laughs> The the big difference is the why, CICD. Why remove the CD part, basically? The, the CID part is, the biggest point is that the CICD is triggered by an event in the Git. So if I make change in the Git, it will be provisioned to my infrastructure. But if someone or something changes in the infrastructure, this will be not detected, there is no drift, detection nothing because it needs to wait until the pipeline is run again. Of course, you could go and kind of run the CICD pipeline every night. Then you can have some of these uh, benefits, but the, the big change would be to really have this reconciliation loop all the time to change the network if anything would be changed by hand. Does that make sense? Sort of. If we have beer, we can definitely discuss about it. Okay. Thank you very much, Urs. That's it.